Hey guys, it's Aaron. I'm back in the garage today bringing you another project from the Porsche 101 Projects book. If you own a Boxster and don't own this book, you should probably get it. I'll put a link to this and some other stuff down in the description of the video. And I got a playlist right here of the current projects that I've done going through and marking off a bunch of them in this book. Today we're going to focus on Project 91, the onboard computer. Also, standard with this video and all other videos on my channel is my dumbass music free guarantee. I will not be playing stupid music throughout my videos. So I ordered the onboard computer stock from somebody on uh, one of the Facebook groups that was selling a few of them. And I don't know if I actually need this. I don't I know I don't need it, but uh, I figured, hey, it's a project in the book and I've been doing them all. So what the heck, I might as well. So here are the screws that attach it. And he sent me some pins uh, from one of these spare boxers that he has that will fit that we will need. So in the book, they even have a diagram and tell you how to create this little connector, uh, which would fit into this connector. But that's about $30 more in parts, and it really just lets you disconnect this later, and hopefully I'll never need to disconnect this. So I am going to take the route that uh, the guy that sold it to me recommended and just snip this thing off and hardwire it. If you do want to go through the hassle yourself of creating that connector, here is the part number for the connector and the wires you can actually get through a VW dealership, and those are the VW part numbers. So if you have the book, it's uh, just a couple pages long. It says that the difficulty is three wrenches and it's going to take about four hours. So uh, there's a lot of complicated stuff in here that I had to read over several times to figure out what the heck they were talking about, trying to look at these pictures. So if you're going to do it, actually seeing it be done is obviously the best way to do it. Uh, obviously, I've never done this before, but I'm going to give it a shot. And if it works out, then uh, hopefully you guys will like the video. Give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Um, yeah, it's got another page here. Oh, yeah. So one thing is you do have to program this when you're done to get the functionality to work. You have to uh, do a little coding. So if you have a Durametric or one of these things here, you can do it yourself. Otherwise, you have to take it to a BM, uh, BMW, a uh, Porsche shop and or dealership and let them do it for you. I just want to show you one thing here. When you turn your ignition on right under the mile an hour right here, if this shows you your temperature, then the coating has already been done for you. So as you can see, I only have one stock over here and the new one is going to go right here. And there's the it's rubber and squishy. So I'm assuming I can just cut a hole out of there and uh, stick this one in. But some people, they want if you only want the outside temperature, you can just do the coating without adding the stock and the temperature will be there. But of course, with the stock, you will be able to uh, use it to change that and see other features there. Before you take it in to get coated, just check here first and it might already be done for you. So what am I going to gain by adding this, you might ask? Well, it's going to give me some additional functionality on the gauge cluster that I just showed you. Things like the range on your remaining fuel, the outside temperature, a speed alert gong, average fuel consumption, and at the average speed calculation. All right, so our first step is to remove the steering wheel. I already have a video showing you how to do that. I'll put a link to it right here. And uh, of course, if you don't look at this video and know already how to do it, uh, don't forget to disconnect the negative terminal of your battery remove the steering wheel and then come back and join me all right welcome back hopefully your car looks something like this now so our next part is to remove the gauge cluster up here and wouldn't you know it i have a video on how to do that so here's a link to that one so get the gauge cluster out next all right guys welcome back hopefully your car looks something like this now i had never done that before but after watching the video that I posted of Aaron doing it. It probably took me maybe 10 minutes after watching the video, seeing how to do it, not too bad at all. So our next step is to remove the uh, steering wheel surround thing, I guess. And we're gonna start by a little Phillips down here. And then these uh, four are also Phillips. So I got a little baby stubby Phillips to get this one going. Don't lose this guy. Go back to a regular Phillips for these four. Phew. 
here we have two T20s that we have to remove. Yeah, I think the pieces just come off. Right, that piece. And top piece. Grooves that just go in side here. Oop. And we got one more little one around this side. I forgot him. Now the pieces will just separate. All right. Let's see. This piece should come off now. That piece off. In case I forgot to mention this at the start of the video, which I think I did, uh, there's a lever down here that allows you to telescope the wheel in and out. So you want to make sure that it's as close to you, furthest out you can pull it before you start doing all of this. They don't explain this in the book, but if you look, this rubber piece here is just in a groove, so you can actually pull this down and slide it right out. So that's how they got this thing off. So both of these are in the same grommet. Let's pull it right off. And then you can get this whole piece out. There we go. And you're left with this. So we should be able to move remove this piece now there's a you can see there's a little gap in it around that bar so I have to use that to our advantage i guess I'll just to dean it and stretch it <laughs> i guess you just gotta kind of be forceful and uh open that gap Be using two hands so I don't break this thing. All right, let me get it off. All right, just so want to show you the direction I finally got it off. I just pulled this top one apart, spread it, opened it over there, and pulled it out this way. Now be careful with these things uh, because these little hooks on mine were getting caught in the wires, and that's what was uh, causing difficulty the first time. So just go nice and slow with it and avoid the wires. These like mine, you probably have a bunch of old foam and crap down here so that's uh probably where a lot of the stuff that was falling down here was coming from so yeah go ahead and vacuum all this out all right so the book says the next step is to tape the airbag spring so that it doesn't rotate but it's locked so it can't rotate uh, but i guess what they mean is just tape these two pieces together so they don't move around and they actually suggest removing this whole assembly only because it's fragile and you could break it while you're in here. But I'm gonna just, uh, in the picture, it looks like they broke one of these things somehow. Uh, but I'm just gonna leave it on and not break it. That's my plan. I think we are ready to attach the some wiring and the, obviously the stock is gonna go right in here. I'm gonna take this little rubber piece off and just use an X-Acto knife and trim out a hole for our new stock. So got this piece, you can see there's a little uh, indentation. I'm just gonna cut right around there and just giving a shout out to Shop Dog. Hey, Melly. Hey, baby. Just like so. All right, so apparently you can uh, leave the steering wheel on and still do all of this if you want. Um, I'm taking it off mostly because it's going to be a lot easier to film, but also I think it would be in the way and a lot easier to do the job. So the next step is the scary part, the wiring. So I believe, according to this picture, that this white connector is where uh, we're going to be plugging into. So I'm just going to tuck it under here so I can reach it easier and figure out how to get to all the wires here. All right, what I did here is this little part, the little tab here, I lifted up to take it off of that notch and then I can slide this part off 
and that leaves us with this piece and the pins that I have are supposed to fit right into here. If you zoom in on the base of this thing, you will see that all of these slots are numbered. Here's the numbers over here. And the book has a little guide to which pin goes to which the uh, gauge cluster pin number are the numbers on that connector that we just saw. So I have a 98 Boxster, so I'm gonna be going with the top one. I'm going to be putting four pins in the gauge cluster in spots number 20, 21, 22, and 25. This is what the pin looks like. The one I got with my stock. So before I put the pins in, first I'm going to label these wires somehow because they're not the correct colors, they're just random wires. And they're also not long enough, so I'm going to be extending these by soldering on a little extension because they need to go from here essentially and run down to under here. So I need to add about a foot of wire onto these. All right, so I just have a crappy soldering iron over there and I bought this cheap little tool that's uh, my first time using it to hold the wires to make it easier to solder. I have my uh, pin here, the wire, and I have some spare wire laying around. This came with my wiring kit for the uh, sub in the Boxster, and I'm just gonna snip these wires all off and use them as extra length of wire. Should be about the right length to what I need. So I'm just gonna cut that off. And coincidentally, it's five wires. So strip it a little bit, twist it up. And I'm going to put this side in this alligator clip. And I got some little pieces of heat shrink tubing that I will put on that side. And strip the wire that we're going to be lengthening. Twist him up. Clip them together on here. wire twisted together a little bit and use my soldering iron not that great at these but uh, the tip I was given was always just to heat the actual wire itself and then put the solder on top wearing some safety glasses of course all right so I always like to show you my mistakes as well as successes just uh, to help you learn so when I heated the wire up it already started shrinking this uh, heat shrink right here so I'm gonna start the heat shrink down further on the wire so it's not near that next time that way I can uh, not have this issue but anyway I'll just go ahead and solder this here all right once that's soldered on there I'm gonna uh, for this one that I messed up I'm gonna go ahead and shrink that one on here tight and then I'm gonna slide a new one over to cover that all right, slide the new one right over there and over our solder joint and heat this one up. There we are, good as new. So just be careful of the temperature of the clips because they can of course get heated up too. And now I have a much longer length of wire that we can solder onto our connector. So I'm just gonna repeat the same process for the other four wires. These five wires need to be labeled one through five, so you can either uh, put some kind of tag on them or do what I did. I just did one dot on this one, so that's gonna be one, two, three, four, and five. So now back to this list, I'm gonna follow this. So I'm gonna start with pin two goes to gauge cluster number 20. So this is my pin two, so I'm gonna take this one, which happens to be uh, blue and brown, and find number 20. So I'm gonna look on here and see that number 20 is right here. So I'm gonna follow it up and right in there, I'm gonna stick this one. So here goes our pin for number 20. Just drop him down in there. Pin number three goes to 21 right next to it. Yeah, and if you look at the pins, you'll see that one side has this kind of indentation on it. And the other sides are kind of 
squarish. So one side is obviously different than the others. And that is the one that goes where you can see it that faces out. You can see all the other pins have that same marking on them. It's my pin four, it goes to 22. Just uh, continuing down the line. 22 is the last one here that does not have a pin in it. So I'll try to push this one in and let you listen because you can hear it snap when it goes in. All right, so there's a little click and if you pull it, it should be stuck in there. Pin five goes into number 25. So it's not labeled, but you can see the arrow is under where 24 and 25 would be. So 25 is the empty one. Once you have the four pins in there, we're gonna put this connector back on. Just slide it back into place and it will snap in. Whichever one you label as your pin one is actually not gonna go into that harness, so you don't need the pin on it. But since I have the pin and it fits into this pretty well, I'm just going to crush it onto here. You just need a little uh, eyelet to go under a screw for our ground. So I'm just gonna take this and crush it under there and it's not going anywhere. So if we look here where our console used to be at this right here, it is a T20 and I am just going to loosen it. Now, if you have a full eyelet, you'll of course have to take it off. So I'm just gonna slide this behind there and tighten it up for our, our ground. And so that these new wires don't get pulled, I'm just gonna take a zip tie and put it on here. And now I can tuck these back under here where they started. Don't lose this guy. Come here. As you can see here, I just added a couple more zip ties along the way to make this nice and tidy. Quick note, I just rerouted the grounding guy so that it would come under here and I could attach it to the zip tie bundle. All right guys, hang in there with me. We are almost done. So this is our new stock. It's just sitting here right now. You can tell it's gonna line up on here and there's a little groove in that bracket that you can tuck those wires behind and they are going to run up here and our connector is on them so if you made the little connector like the book says you would just plug it in right here uh, so as you can see i did need a little more length to get here but what i'm going to do now and our last step really is to cut this off and solder them on to our five wires now i'm going to take a picture uh yours might be the same color i assume they probably are if you have the same year boxster. If they're not, I would uh, take a picture and remember the order of them because they are going to be all loose as soon as we cut them. And we're gonna want to know that this is one, two, three, four, five. And connect them, solder them on to our five wires. And I just wanna note on mine that at the end there is a place for a number six, but there is no number six. So uh, that's what leads me to believe that this is number one over here. All right, no going back now, I just snipped it. But uh, this can also be my map. So here's how they look now. I'm going to uh, cut this back a little bit and strip these three, uh, these five wires. All right, that's what these look like now. And I almost just made a mistake and cut all of these off at the same time because we need to cut them off shorter. But then I would have cut off my markings for which one is which, so. I'm gonna cut off one at a time, starting with the black one here that is number one. So I'll cut them down to about this length here to solder them on. So now that these are cut, I'm just gonna go ahead and attach this stock here so that uh, it's not dangling. Start by sliding this through here. All right, I just made the five soldering connections down here and it all looks really good. I just added the one zip tie right here to the other a uh, little bundle of wires and that is it so the next step is just putting everything back together actually the next step is hitting the like button on this video i can't believe you haven't done that yet uh and we're gonna put everything back together and then we're gonna have it programmed as the very last step so as a reminder put this thing back on put the two screws back in there and i'm putting this one back on and uh you just pull this rubber grommet 
back into here and same on this side just fit it in there and continue backwards in the reassembly process next i reassembled the top piece and put the two little side screws back in and you want to make sure that this plastic piece is on top of this metal bracket. Uh, I had it behind there at first when I was trying to fit it and it wasn't fitting very well and that was why. Reattached this trim piece with the four screws. All right, I got everything back together. It literally took about 10 to 15 minutes to put it all back together. So really fast. Uh, next step, reconnect the battery. And then I'm gonna have to wait until tomorrow to take it to the dealership to get it programmed. And then I will be back and we will test this guy out. Slight change of plans. My local Porsche dealership wanted to charge me one hour of labor to update the onboard computer to enable it essentially, which should take them about five minutes, but uh, I'm not gonna pay $195 plus tax for that when I could buy my own Durametric used for that price. So this weekend, I'm gonna drive down and pick up a Durametric and I'm going to program it and there will be a separate video that will be linked here as soon as it is done. But uh, this is how you do all the hardware part of it and the coding part will be coming up in the next video.